Hello everybody and welcome to my brand new segment on my YouTube channel which I have aptly named Han Rambles. Han Rambles. I'm going to be talking to creatives and mamas and papas and anyone who's willing to ramble with me and we're going to be talking about specific subjects each week in the hopes that it'll help inspire, give you a bit of a distraction in this really weird and intense time. So enjoy! Okay, we're here with uh, Mary from Mary W. Thomas Wedding Photography and uh, we will be talking about um, imposter syndrome today, which sucks ass. So we <laughs> discussed that. Um, yeah. Uh, over to you. Hello, I'm Mary. Um, I'm based in Newport, basically. Um, I've lived in Cardiff for the last seven years and i am a wedding photographer and she's awesome and she's amazing she does lots of documentary work and natural candid beautiful moments and i think that's <laughs> that's beautiful and wonderful tell me about like when you got started and and why you do photography i was always the one in school that had their camera with them mm -hmm. um, and i always liked taking photos and portraits of my friends and stuff um and i just thought it was like a lot of fun decided to do um art in college for some reason never decided to do photography as my art I always was encouraged to do painting or something like it wasn't considered an art form in itself sure yeah it was really weird um so I would always sway towards taking a photo and then painting the photo oh okay yeah which yeah which was quite random but then I realized that my best work were photographs mm -hmm. so I decided to do fine art in uni um because basically I liked all different forms of art and I couldn't decide <laughs> what I wanted to do I went to Cardiff Met okay. uni and I decided to start doing film photography Oh, basically really? because they gave us free film oh. <laughs> and i totally have done exactly the same yeah yeah but free film because i love documenting anyway it was my favorite thing so i carried on with that great you've come really far and like your work is stunning and amazing thanks you should be very very proud of yourself i'm very Thank proud you. of you and we met you started following me on instagram oh I think and then you messaged me but I don't know how you found me I think you found me through Cardiff photographer hashtag oh okay yeah probably the important yeah. hashtags guys yeah, yeah. Um, oh that's right because I, I think I'd only just moved to Cardiff maybe like a couple of years before and I was looking to meet up with other photographers and mm. like-minded people and I think that's I think that's how it how we met yeah and then we met up for a coffee yeah. and I was really hyped up on coffee and I was really chatty <laughs> and I was just you thinking think oh my uh, when I first started looking into wedding photography um I'd done a few weddings but I didn't know any other wedding f photographers mm -hmm. at all um and for some reason I would start conversations with people and because I didn't have any experience, people wouldn't necessarily take me that seriously. Sure, okay. It, it was quite hard to get to know people initially, mm -hmm. just through Instagram and stuff. But then, at the time, I was doing, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. I'd just come out of uni, and I was doing more like contemporary photography maybe like sure. experimental mm -hmm. um, and then I was just doing portraits for people you just I I, I felt like an imposter because I was like well, I, I don't feel like I fit in I'm not a professional mm -hmm. and it took me ages I think probably up until this year to be like oh actually I I have a right to be here just as yeah. much as everyone else yeah absolutely and yeah. I think yeah one of the times that I sort of thought that I was out of my depth is when people were asking me about my experience or how many weddings or how many births I'd done and I I remember saying oh I, ha I haven't done any yet when it came to births but it's something that I'd like to do and I felt I felt like I was in the wrong place and I mm. didn't really have a right to be there like you said and yeah and it's tricky and like now I've started mentoring 
my yeah. my first mental session I was like I'm a fraud I shouldn't be doing this I shouldn't be teaching uh, I don't know what I'm talking about and then like I started talking and I thought actually I've been doing this for a really long time and yeah I'm really passionate about what I do mm. and I do have the right to be here and I do have the right to be teaching because I love it and because yeah. I believe in it well, I used to feel quite unconfident about saying that I was self-employed for ages mm-hmm. or like when someone said oh what do you do and then you say oh, I'm a photographer yeah. like it's really hard to get used to saying mm-hmm. you think no that's not me like it, it is really strange but I even found it strange to even say that that was my job yeah um, and I think when I had a part-time job I think my old employer would just think oh you'll need a full-time job one day or mm-hmm. a self-employed dream isn't isn't doable or something like that and mm-hmm. it would make it would make me doubt myself it makes such a difference when you know other self-employed people it makes the world a difference yeah for sure definitely like when you sit you you're honest and you say look I'm really struggling with being self-employed and they're like yeah. okay me too like <laughs> yeah I'm going through exactly the same thing this tax return is doing my head in like and I I've had a lot of people in my life say you know when you're like oh I'm a photographer um and they're like oh so so what's your job and I'm like no no I I'm a photographer that that is my job I don't have a second job because I don't need one now like I did at the start it's it's really hard to not feel embarrassed by yeah. that you're self-employed I totally get that because really at, at the beginning I, I it doesn't even feel that long ago but I swear like a year ago it feels completely different because I feel like the more people I've met and the more connections I've met I've like got more into the community of the normality of being self-employed mm-hmm. it's really hard to see it how I used to see it yeah and it is mad to look back and think that that that's the way that our minds were sort of programmed and yeah. like that's how we were thinking and how we were living and I do wonder if the way that we were thinking and our attitude towards what we do was affecting our business and affecting yeah. our activity somehow I totally think so yeah I wouldn't think to put up my prices mm-hmm. to a normal amount mm-hmm. like for ages you know I would doubt myself so much that I wouldn't price properly mm-hmm. and you know it I think what put my confidence up was when I put my prices up and people were still booking me yeah I was like that's really that's a really good feeling to think that you are actually worth what you're Mm. charging if if not more you are worth so much more than what you charge when you start out yeah but you know it that's sort of the process that you go through yeah because I think it's like completely normal for me to get experience it was so hard for me to get second shooter experience that in the end I just didn't do Mm -hmm. any so I did the whole like reduced rates to get experience Mm -hmm. then I put my prices up when I felt I can do this this is cool but I do see it as like a a normal way to do it even now (laughs) I'm still doing some shoots for free as part of like a portfolio building to attract the kind of clients and attract the kind of work that I want and that I desire for like for future people but if I don't put it out there then no one's going to know that's something that I offer and even if it's costing you money costing you more money to do the shoot like petrol editing time um you know insurance you know all this it's Mm. it's definitely an investment and you'll get you'll earn that all back from Mm -hmm. the clients you get in the future I think the best thing I ever did was finish my job my last job I realized the the hours that I was putting into their business I could get for my business I was getting paid minimum wage and I was working 30 something hours Mm -hmm. a week Mm -hmm. if I was putting that many hours into my own business I would see maybe not you know that investment straight away Mm -hmm. but I totally saw that time as investment Mm-hmm. the future of my business a year ago seems so different to this year it's crazy mm-hmm. even if you do one season of so like I did one season of reduced rates mm-hmm. um and I thank I'm so thankful for all those clients that trusted me mm. and my ability because they obviously only saw two weddings that I'd done mm-hmm. and five of them all decided to choose me to do their wedding 
And I was like, wow, like looking back now, I just think that is such a, a amazing thing to do because mm-hmm. that has enabled me to now go full time. I can't even stress like how much your work's improved in, in a year. Like your work was already amazing, but now like you see your images and it's, they're striking. Like they're really beautiful. And oh, thank you. Oh, for sure. And that's all because like, those initial clients trusted you and gave you the confidence Mm -hmm. to do you know and it's the same with me and the same with any photographer that yeah you need those initial moments of not earning very much I think it's the same with any self-employed you need that time to be able to grow to put into your business and all that like blood sweat and tears Mm -hmm. then be able to go full-time and and do the thing that you're really passionate about and and do it well I think so I I think it's so funny because a year ago I was thinking right I need this many clients blah 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 blah. and actually I didn't know that many other photographers and it's made a huge difference talking to other photographers and feeling part of a community because I find like being self-employed is so isolating sometimes if you haven't got that community I don't feel as much competition. So I've seen it actually happening where people that are more experienced will make a newbie doubt what Mm -hmm. they want to do. And I've seen it so many times Mm -hmm. um, where someone really wanted to get into photography, but they couldn't afford new equipment. They were told, well, you need this much budget to to take good photographs, basically. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, why are you telling that person that? (laughs) like not true yeah yeah exactly and I remember just really I feel passionate about encouraging people to just create regardless for sure yeah because other than I think it was the worst thing ever if someone said to me don't bother I would hate anyone else to feel like Mm. they're not welcome I knew someone I still know someone um and they they were really struggling financially so they couldn't afford Um, new equipment and people were just telling them to not be in the industry and telling this other person to not bother I just think it's Mm. it's it's just I don't understand that yeah and I think that's why a lot of people feel like they're doing they're imposter they have this imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. people need to be encouraged to feel part of it yeah I definitely think that I think without the sense of community and it doesn't even have to be that you're in the same branch of photography like we chat all the time and big up each other's work but I'm in one section of photography and you're in a very different section of photography yeah but that doesn't matter because we're still we're still photographers and we're still self-employed photographers at the end of the day should I I tell you a really funny thing yeah always um so I got asked to do a wedding my first ever wedding and I did it on a Nikon D3200 I don't know that's not very technical but it's basically it's not even full frame it's oh yeah it's it's a really old camera Mm -hmm. and I I used it's it's worth about less than 200 quid maybe 100 and something quid Uh and I did that and it actually was all right and I booked my initial my next one based on the photos I took on that one Mm -hmm. and I was able to by my full kit but it's just so funny like if someone have said to me oh don't work like there's no point in you even doing it you haven't got the kit mm-hmm. or something like that it would have stopped me and then it wouldn't have led on to yeah exactly doing more yeah you're totally right I had a crop center until like two and a half years ago yeah no mine two two years ago I didn't all my photos were taken on a really inexpensive camera I couldn't even tell you what it was I can't remember I've been quite gradual with my business, which I quite like. I think that's okay. Absolutely. And I think if it if it sits well with you, then that's perfect. I remember the first time I posted on one of those Facebook groups, I said, I'm building my portfolio, I'm I'm whatever, a few hundred quid. Mm-hmm. And the only people that commented were other photographers. Yeah. Making fun of me, basically. Yeah. The people that I was doing weddings for, they were people on like super low budgets Mm -hmm. and I was yeah again like if I couldn't have done those I wouldn't have been able to progress Mm -hmm. I think those were the the main times where I felt like an imposter yeah when I was kind of shut down yeah I totally get that and it's really hard to like keep going 
after you've yeah. had, had a comment like that. Like you encouraged me so much when I first started. Mm-hmm. I was like, yes, like it's so good. And then I try and do that to other people, try and encourage people. Yeah, and I think um, you, you've got to have community over competition. And oh, although, totally. although like there is this sense of you need to pay your bills and you need to feed your family and yourself, mm. you know, I just think that if you can't be kind, then... <laughs> yeah I don't really know how to finish that sentence but I just feel like it's it's not it's not all about working all the time with every single client that you can get you need to match and vibe with your client as much as they need to vibe with you Mm -hmm. because otherwise you know the whole energy is going to be off like if you were to do a wedding but you were on a totally different page to Mm -hmm your client and they expected something so different yeah you offer then it's just not going to work which is exactly what you don't want to get into because that's so so stressful I think it's really positive that people know that they're not alone if they feel like that um Mm -hmm. it's really it's a good thing to be open and honest so thank you very much for sharing where can people find you on instagram and things so my instagram is at underscore mary wt and my website is www dot oh yeah that's me that's my instagram and then my website is mary w thomas dot com yeah thank you